we find our identity in Christ. You know, we're believers yeah. of Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian before I say I'm an, I'm an American. Too. I'm a Christian before I say I'm, I'm an American. That's just the way I see it. I think it just goes with like my faith. Where does my faith align more with, you know? And I can't, I'm not out here to tell you I'm Republican, I'm Democratic, but that's just the way I see it. I'm a Christian before I'm a citizen. A president is a president, but my God is bigger than a president. I have a couple friends who believe different. Like, you know, some are just like pro-Trump. I have some that are so pro-Biden and, and I've seen them clash, you know? like on their little arguments and I'm just like, I'm just watching, you know, cause I, I can't really put my input besides just like observe, you know, observing is important before even speaking. Me and my friend Steven, we have like, you know, conversations where we disagree on things like harshly, but like, it's okay, you know, and I'm, I'm all about confrontation. Uh, cause again, it's just sparking a conversation. My name is Steven Rosado. Um, I am 23 years old. A lot of people believe I should vote my religion. Right, oh, I should vote my faith. I'm still trying to understand what that looks like because that looks different in every state. And that even looks different by like what church you go to, even in the same state, you know, like it's all different when it comes to that. And that's why like me and Nari were so big on like, well, hey, we're just gonna like invite God into this decision and really just figure out what that looks like. I cannot pinpoint who you're gonna be voting for. <laughs> I don't know. Literally. Like, you the word? Man, that's a hard question because I, I don't want to be insensitive, but also do believe like what the Bible says. I'm still learning about the subject. I'm still trying to understand it a little bit deeper. Like, yes, I believe what the Bible says, but it's so much more than just like a yes or a no. Like, I, I don't know. It's much deeper. Like, you know, it's not just black and white. Yeah, like, I don't know. The it's, humanistic part of me would say, yeah, it's the woman's choice. You know, like, yeah. you know, she's the one carrying it. But the Bible doesn't doesn't agree with that. I don't, I don't think there is a choice. You know, it's, you should give birth to the baby. But as a human, like me being flesh and being real, it's like, you know, there is there is the option that God gives us free will. You do what you want with it, but are you serving Him? You know, with with the decision you make. Bro, people still need someone to call when they're in trouble. We do need police. I can't say how to train them because I don't know. You know, but there's people who are educated who can help. Doctors go through years of training and stuff like that and cops have a gun in their hands and we only give them like, what, maybe a year or two? Like, I don't know the specific amount of time, but like, I think it is more training. I just think it's more about policing our police and maybe giving them more education to make sure that they have what it takes to make those rational decisions. Investing in the people into the community, then you can help stop crime. I feel really strongly about this because, like, I I did get arrested when I was a kid. People who came from broken homes tend to go to gangs and all these different things. Why don't we fix the root of the problem, right? The the communities, the homes, the the getting them a, a different way, get more into sports programs and all these different things, like throwing money into that so that we don't have to worry about okay, stopping all these different crimes that we can just catch it before it gets to it. You know, it's kind of like let's say your trees outside is bad and we're just picking off the bad fruit. It's always gonna produce bad fruit because the root is bad. So we gotta focus on cutting on cutting the tree and fixing the tree so that we don't have to keep picking because we're gonna be picking forever. I educate myself a lot through podcasts. Like when it comes to social issues and stuff like that, there's certain people that I trust to be able to talk about things and I'm like, okay, cool, I really disagree with that. Or, hey, that was a really good point. I'm gonna implement that. Through having conversation, like how else are you gonna learn and educate yourself if you're not going out there having conversations? Not with just people you're comfortable with, but people that challenge you, right? Well, why do you think the way that you think, right? Why do you believe what you believe in? And just really sitting down with people and just finding out their stories, man. I have immigrant family, so they don't really have the ability to vote. So I didn't think I was as important as I am now that I have the chance to vote. Millennials in our generation is so fixed on, we want change, we want change. We're the first ones to go out rioting because um, like the injustice we see around the world and social issues, but the real things that we can actually do, we don't take part of. Understanding and realizing that we do have power, kind of like we're locked in a cell, but the key is in our hand and that key is voting, right? Like 
a small little change that does actually make an impact and even change my mind because honestly like i have a the mail in ballot at home right now and i haven't opened it because i'm like oh i don't know like all these people suck and everything's gonna be bad and one's like a racist and the other one's like whatever but i've never kind of what nadi was saying never took the time to actually understand and see what i can really do to fix it us millennials and us gen z really can make an influence and not just talk about it but be about it I want to be guys. Yeah. Just let us know who you love yeah. and what you guys have done. Yeah. Guys, this is going to be a really good